How did it go today? What did you have to relearn? Um. <laughs> <laughs> what did you have to relearn? Ah. Uh, keep your hands straight when you're painting with the sprayer instead of twisting it like that. Why is that? Uh, so you get your coating on correctly. I was doing a lot of the same thing today. I just was reinforced for me like how much having a good partner and teamwork um, can help the job go along. So each of you work on your own thing, but also make sure that you're supporting each other and working together. So I was you know, running around the house, making sure there was ladders and benches in place for JC to move around. And I think that made the painting the outside go a lot faster. Oh, yeah. So I learned a little trick with the blade today when I was peeling off the paint from the roof, um, the roofing coating off of the drip edge. If you really get your corner of your blade in there underneath the, the coating and, the, and then kind of wiggle it, it comes off a lot easier than what I was doing earlier, which was just like jamming my blade into it over and over and actually uh, very frustrating and not very productive. So if you kind of just get the corner under the, the coating, it lifts up a lot easier. Oh, my God, was anything you, uh, you wish you had? Uh, that, not, no, I, I don't know. Wish I would have got some uh, glasses with contacts in them, that's for sure. Because um, it's very hard to see with uh, the safety glasses for me. So that's one thing I have to look forward to, I guess. <laughs> uh, the holding the, uh, the sprayer at an angle. So the paint doesn't really stick at when it's at an angle. So you want to make sure your hands straight. Um, even if you're going only a little bit. Um, I don't think there was any mistakes today. Just a lot of detail work and a lot of making sure that, that we had everything covered. Um, making sure that the communication was clear, what's getting taped off, what's not getting taped off, what's getting painted, what's not getting painted. That was just something that was reinforced. So when you leave your hands straight, the paint's actually staying on there a lot nicer instead of when you're doing it at an angle. I learned that if you get paint, it's so loud in here. If you get paint on one of the very hot halogen lights, it smells terrible. <laughs> Starts burning. Don't just jump into it, make a game plan. Figure out who's doing what, how many buckets do you need, prep your area, triple check everything, um, and then go fast. But plan first and then move quickly. All right, so today is a pretty low on tools. We really don't have that much. We're gonna just keep touching up, making sure that we have prepped every last possible part of this house before we paint it. And then we're gonna paint. So the same things that we've been using for the last couple days you're going to want your small caulking gun you also might need your putty knife and your wood filler if you have any screws left that haven't been filled in um, we just had one or two it wasn't a bunch of them but you may need this um, you're also going to want of course your tape and your plastic so you can cover things cover your neighbor's houses cover your tools cover your work area and of course cover windows and doors Flashlight is going to be really helpful again for seeing areas where you may have missed with the paint if you need to light something up and see if it's if it's too dark and you'll also probably need a rag um, a damp cloth or a sponge to wipe off any excess um, silicone or um, caulking that you might have as you're going around and finishing up your prep. The last thing you might need is your harness. Um, you can also do this from a ladder without using a harness. I found it easier to do from the roof. And so you're going to get your knife and you're going to go along the drip edge and any roof coating that's come off, you're going to use your putty knife to just scrape that off and really get your, get your knife in at an angle and scrape off any of that roof coating that's like dripping over the edge and creating that unsightly look. And that's all our tools for today. So I'm just going to continue taping like I was yesterday. So the interior is all taped off and as soon as JC gets here, he's going to prime inside. While he's doing that, I'm going to be taping off uh, the outside. And I just wanted to go over the door because I don't know about you guys, but last time we built, <clears throat> I had instruction to first just cover the glass. So I did that. Then I had instruction to cover just all the plastic part and leave the door. And then finally, I saw some doors were just fully covered. So I wasn't really sure with this, what parts are we covering and what are we taping? So final answer for everybody, drum roll please. We're going to tape off the plastic um, because the paint that we use does not adhere to this plastic texture. We would have to use a different kind of paint. 
And so to get this curve, what I do is I kind of just run the tape, I anchor it here in the corner, and then I just line it up flush and run it along the top. And you just kind of press it down as you go at an angle because it's a little bit of a tricky shape um, to tape off. And keep going so we can keep this door shut. I'm not on the edge anymore, so I have to keep. Okay. Yeah, here we can see how we want to make sure we get all along this top curve here. And you just kind of slide your hand along and make sure you're anchoring it. You don't need to press the rest of this down yet. We're going to use this side inside to attach the plastic to cover the rest of this. We're just going to make, oops, did not mean to do that. Well, we're just going to make the outline. So we'll just overlap this where it tore, get it back in line with the rest of the tape and keep going along the outline right here. Okay. Fold this edge here. You want to try to really get it as precise as possible. This is part of the first thing that people see, so you don't want it looking sloppy. Really try to make sure that your tape is on the plastic and not on the door because that's going to leave parts of the door unpainted and that will be very visible. So now we have this shape and we're going to go cut out a piece of plastic and press it in here. So you just tack it underneath and the tape is sticky enough to hold it in place. And just keep Try to make sure you don't have any gaps. If you do end up with any gaps, if your plastic happens to be too short, just get a piece of tape and cover anything where um, the spray might be able to get under the plastic and get on the window. And then just run your thumb along the edge again. Really try to make sure you have a good seal all the way around. <clears throat> and to the plastic. All right. And then keep going. We'll do the same thing with the windows. So getting it started, set it on prime. This has to be lifted up. And, that, and then you're going to, it will start catching once you get this tube in there. And you, you'll hear it change. So you flip that down. And you can push this pressure up a little bit. But then all the fluid inside the machine's got to come out. So... So JC is getting us an empty bucket that we'll use to empty Right. Out. We're going to need a few buckets for this. So we're going to need a bucket of water and an empty bucket. An empty bucket. Yes. And then our paint bucket as right. well. So we have a few buckets here. Okay, I'm going to keep talking about paint prep a little bit more. It's really important. Paint prep is almost as important as painting itself. Um, if you ever see, move in somewhere and you see like outlet boxes painted, um, electrical things painted over, um, I don't know if you've ever seen those outlets where they've been painted five or six times, it looks really crappy. So we want to really make sure that this is a brand new build. We want it to look pristine. We want it to look perfect. So we've got our windows taped off. We're going to put plastic under here so we still have the sticky side available to put our plastic up and then we also want to make sure we tape off all of this right so this looks beautiful it's nice and shiny this not so much what is this what do we do do we knock it off do we paint it well we get our putty knife and we're going to knock it off but we're going to just do it in line with the ship lap so just kind of keep working at it gently you don't want to rip it out because it's going to pull out from the wall so just keep kind of pushing it into the metal and then it eventually will break free. So you want to just keep working that to get it off and this one as well. Then we're going to want to tape and plastic on all of these pieces. I've started on this box over here. So first you're just going to do the perimeter with your tape 
and then you can go around and add plastic. Um, I would recommend wrapping these with plastic as well. This, we do want to paint back here. It's going to look a little bit weird if we don't get paint on this piece, on this wall here. So you are going to want to tape with as low a profile as possible. You don't want to just put a big plastic bag over everything. You're going to have to really get it um, in there. And I'll show you at the end when I'm done what that should look like. All right, so this is all prepared now. You can see that I went to a little bit of effort to make sure there's plastic, there's tape everywhere, and I did a really low profile with this tape. And that's gonna mean that when JC is spraying over here, he'll be able to get this back piece, and we're not gonna have a beautiful white house with a big brown mark all around the utility area. Everything is gonna be uniform, and so we'll be able to get the paint back here behind on the shiplap that's behind these pieces and then here at the bottom because we're not painting the bottom half of the house you can just use plastic and it doesn't matter this part will will fluff out and it may leave a a mark behind it but that's not going to matter because we're not painting this part but for the part that's on the shiplap you want to do a really good job preserve that shiny copper look for the client and make sure that you have a nice um, tight profile with all your taping and that everything is is sealed and really tight um, and then put your plastic make sure that no paint can get into the plastic either. Um, this took about 20, 25 minutes. Do not spend all day on it. To do all of your taping for the whole house, the door and the windows and everything should only take an hour. And this is by far the most involved part. So just this part alone is, is maybe about 20 minutes, but it shouldn't be longer than that. Really important part though. Don't miss it. So basically you gotta clean out your machine first. Make sure you have a bucket of water. Um, make sure you have an empty one and then another empty one for paint. Uh, this one is watered down paint. That one's going to be a little more paint. As you can tell, it's dirty anyways, so I said, uh, why not? And so uh, what are you doing when you're pushing the water through here? You're pushing the previous paint out and making sure that the... the Cleaning it out. That's what basically what you're doing is just making sure it's cleaned out. Um, you don't... Might be the same color that you're using today, but you know, you just it's better to clean it out. Mm, I'm just uh, mixing the paint up. Uh, oh, sorry. You want to make sure that uh, you mix it up, get everything nice and stirred. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, I, I just got some extra water to clean my paint. Uh, throw it a little bit out, or whatever it's called, paint mixer. I'm going to go ahead and start painting. Turn my machine on. I just go side to side. That's my easiest way to go, and you can go up and down. It's up to you. I mean, for the big walls, I just go to side to side because why not? <laughs> and just make sure you stand far far enough to where you're not making seams. Yeah, what, is one of, what is one of these seams that you're referring to? Oh, I can't show you. Um, like right here. You, know, you probably can't see it. See yeah. it? No, probably not. It's just too close, got too close. That's it. Don't want to get too close. So I'm just caulking all these joints where the shiplap butt joints against the next piece so that we can try to make it look like a seamless single piece along the side of the house. And also to prevent moisture and bugs from getting in. I'm just going to go up all the way where all these joints are. And you want to just use the tiniest little bit for this. You really don't need a lot. You're just trying to conceal that edge where they meet up. 
and then try to blend or get rid of any extra. You don't want that to be visible from far away. Make sure that you line up whatever the angle is that you cut on your tip. Line up that angle with the crack as you go. And then just do a little tiny line here and blend it in. This will help it blend in underneath the paint once the paint is over it. Hopefully you'll have to look really hard to find where the seams are. And then we're also caulking along the edge here on the roof. Again, just to prevent any little bugs and things from getting in and to create an airtight, watertight seal. So while I'm up here, I'm noticing that there's a little bit of roof coating that has come down off the roof on some of these edges. So bring your putty knife while you're up here and get those off as well as you're filling in some of these um, cracks up here for the silicone or for the um, caulking. How did it go in here? Ah, uh, chilling now. <laughs> well, was there anything difficult about, about uh, spraying the room here? And nah, then, man. Uh, what comes next? Because this was a primer, right? Yeah, this is a primer. We'll wait for this to uh, dry properly. It's already kind of drying because I have that heat lamp in here. But uh, we're going to go paint the outside and get that done. But now, nah, man, spraying is pretty easy. What I recommend is you just take care of your machine. Because if you don't, then it makes it a lot harder. You know? Um, find your rhythm and just go for it. And make sure you got lots of water to clean her out. All right, so I got up here to scrape the rest of this off. You can do this from below on the ladder, but you're going to save yourself a lot of shoulder pain and a lot of wear and tear if you do it from above. It's just a little bit easier and you can get better leverage, especially if you're not a super buff person. This is like some of the roof coating just dripped over the edge. And so before JC paints it, we're going to make sure this is all cleaned off. And we're going to go over this with a coat of acetone at the very end as well. But we want to get all of this off. It's going to make it look smoother and nicer when we paint it. It'll make a, again, we just want everything to be really uniform. So you might want to make sure that you're wearing your gloves when you do this, otherwise you might not have any knuckles left by the time you're done. Um, they said we're painting the metal. Mm -hmm. I don't know, we're painting all the metal this time. I think just to make it faster, I mean maybe if you want to double check. It probably doesn't hurt to double check. I'm covering up a uh, outlet here just with tape that way we don't paint over it um, get all the wires messed up with paint or anything like that are you getting ready to paint this wall? yeah well actually we're gonna paint inside Oh yeah, no problems with it. Yeah! So right after lunch, JC started painting the interior. That took a little bit less than an hour and now he's painting the outside. And I've done some paint prep and I, I covered the wall. I just wanna show you over here really quick. Just be considerate of other people's things, of the school property, of the other lockers, and just cover things. When you're painting there's a lot of overspray i also covered some of the neighboring houses windows so you can see over here i didn't do an amazing job and it didn't take very long but i threw a piece of a piece of plastic up there and covered it with a few pieces of tape just to prevent any overspray from ruining the other windows that would take a really long time to clean up and it'd be super obnoxious work is a team so when we do the back side of this house just watch how we set up so we start with the little benches and we made kind of a row of those and I'm just staying in front of JC so he can step from one to the next. And then um, I'm going to follow him and then we're going to switch out to the ladders so he can go up higher and reach the very top of the house. 
So just work as a work as a partnership, work in tandem, and just everybody try to stay one step ahead of each other. I'm also helping him make sure the hose doesn't get tangled up, make sure um, he doesn't get unplugged, and all the cords and wires and buckets and pails come along with us. Good day. Oh, oh. Make sure I'm not hitting at an angle so it's not patchy. If you want to hit it straight, so keep your hands straight. So, um, my teacher mentioned um, that I was doing this, right? Which uh, I don't want to spray around here. So basically, I, I was twisting my arm. And when you twist your arm, the paint brushes over everything. It doesn't really stick. But what he said is you got to keep your hands straight. And it act, you can actually notice that the paint actually does stick a lot better. So he did have a really good point there. And uh, yeah, we'll just have to go over it with the second coat and hit it. But, you know, it's my second time spraying. So it's all right. Lessons learned. So I just finished our first coat. It looks pretty good. I am noticing a couple areas. I can see where that those two pieces of wood join together that we missed caulking right there. Um, but other than that, looking for light spots, dark spots. I think we got pretty good coverage here. Looks like the tape stayed on, the plastic stayed in place. So pretty happy with that. I don't see any heavy spots where it's dripping down either. So that's always a good thing. Because um, yeah, it's supposed to be like a mist versus a liquid, right? Yes, so we want it just a very fine, thin coverage. We do have a little orange peel here where it got a little heavy, but it's not actually dripping. Um, but you do, yeah, you want to avoid this orange peel texture and kind of try to keep it a little cleaner. Um, but so far, so good. It looks like all of our tape stayed on, all of our protection, everything stayed good. And other than those couple areas of caulking on the other side, I don't really see any areas of concern. So JC is going to find out if we need to do a second coat inside. We will definitely be doing a second coat outside tomorrow as we set up the cabinets. And we're just checking to see if our interior is good with one coat or if we need to put a second one on. Uh, basically, we just have to hit it with the second coat. Um, there's some spots that didn't get hit. Uh, whatsoever they're still dry or don't have any paint on them at all um our sealant ceiling looks decent I don't, I don't, I don't, uh i don't see any real spots but we'll touch up everything that way um it just looks really nice how long is it going to take you to do this second coat? 15, 20. Maybe less. But I'll probably go through it really nicely, so it might take me around 15, 20. Yeah. Any spots in particular you want to focus on? Uh, this one mainly, but I'm just probably going to hit all of it again just to uh, make sure I didn't miss any spots. And yeah. Susans are over here. So there's not much I can do while JC is doing that second coat inside. So I am staging the cabinets for tomorrow. I'm getting everything ready. And so you want to make sure that you're looking at the plans here and you can see there's little things in writing. So it says W9. That Sorry. is a nine inch wall cabinet. We've got 
B18, that's an 18 inch base, B24, W24. So these are just the measurements and they're either wall cabinets or base cabinets. So we're here in the, in the back of the warehouse trying to pick out all our different cabinets. There's quite a few. Um, let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and the sink base. So there's 10 boxes of cabinets that we've got to get from over here to our house. So I've got about three or four over there and we're just narrowing down which ones we're still missing. Actually, like with the handles, it drags really easy. Just goes. And we're painting the ceilings and the walls all the same color. And how's it look to you in here today? It absolutely looks wonderful. Everything looks nice and even. They did a very good job masking off the windows and outlets and everything. And I'm real happy with the finished product. So we just discovered a little boo-boo. Um, as you may notice, all these wires are white now. Um, we did not tape over the, out the light box. So as nice of a job as I did of taping all the outlets, both JC and I missed the ceiling. And so now all of our wires are white, which is going to be an issue, especially with the copper wire. Um, as that acts as an insulator and we're going to have to scrape that off completely and get every bit of paint off of there so that it can act as a ground again. Um, in order to get our black wires identified, you can scrape it off. It actually comes off pretty easily. I'm just pulling this off with my fingernail here through my glove. Um, but you can also use your knife. It comes off pretty easily so you should be able to scrape these off and identify if you uh, missed any, if you painted over them, you'll be able to peel it off and see which color is which. Uh, but the best way to prevent this is just make sure that you tape everything up, triple check your paint prep, and make sure you got it right before you start painting. We've decided through our construction process to keep the interior and exterior colors the same and keep the sheens the same. Uh, again, they did a real good job prepping getting all the cracks sealed and uh, we'll always have to come back in and do a little touch up here and there but uh, overall the paint looks good they did a nice primer coat on everything and then they did uh, two coats of uh, paint on the outside and again we're using the same color and the same sheen on the inside as we are on the outside it absolutely passes inspection yeah they've done a really good job and uh, very happy with the finish. We'll have a few things that, like I said, we have to touch up here and there, but overall the finished product is uh, looking very, very nice.